Hey guys, this is Marley, one half of Messy Mondays. And before you get started on the show, we wanted to let you know, you will hear some snoring in the background. It is not a grown man. Do not be alarmed. It's just a beautiful English bulldog named Bentley, Shomi's dog. He was underneath um, the table while we were recording and we could not hear it in our headphones and had no idea the microphone was picking it up. He was taking an amazing afternoon nap. So we apologize for the extra noise, but we do hope you guys enjoy the show. Yes, I need to have this vapor rub rubbed all over me. <laughs> that sounds like your eyes might itch at that point. No, but do you know how amazing it feels? It does, it does. It really does. I don't know what it is, but it's like magic. It really helps. And you just think your mom was bullshitting you the whole time, yeah. but it's because she really knew how great Vicks vapor was. Viva Puru. It's amazing. I hope one day when I'm a mom, I know stuff. Like, my mom just knows the answer. Like, I still call her. You feel me? Okay. I'm like, Ma, this and this. And she's like, oh, drink this and that. Right? Yeah. Hey everybody, it's Messy Mondays, episode 15. What's up everybody? What up, what up? Welcome back. Happy Monday everyone. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week. It's going to be a short week because this week it's only three days and then we're all off for Thanksgiving. Yes! <laughs> I love it. I love the holiday season. Me Everything too. is shorter. Absolutely. I love it. And for days like today and it's Monday, everybody get up and be happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday. Everybody start your day. Everybody Thanksgiving is here. This is the best time of year. Yes. <laughs> okay. That was my little moment of excitement for you to wake up. Yeah. You're just only like what? Three days away from bomb ass turkey or yes. fit need like how we do. Right. Right. <laughs> Some, some stuffing, some mac rice and, and cheese. peas. You know what I'm saying? I love carbs. <laughs> 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 That's what it really comes down to. Like, I'm excited for my carb intake for Thanksgiving because it's wow. like a pass. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know what? Like, you get to eat mad carbs. It's like so. you can't judge me. No one at this table can judge exactly. because we're all in the same. Right. It's very true. Oh, I love like a really good, um, like a pumpkin soup. Ooh. I know it's weird. Pumpkin like, is like the flavor of the season. I love it right now. Yeah, but not like that, like fake pumpkin spice kind of shit. Like, like pumpkin soup is like a me or butternut squash soup. Ooh, mm. thick soups. Yeah, I like thick creamy soups. Yeah, so I get excited for that. And then of course, like sweet potato pie. I love sweet potato pie. <laughs> it's I'm just, actually making one this year. Really? Yeah, that's Put gonna be my dessert it. contribution. Oh, nice, nice little takeaway. Okay, I might try that gonna spice it up for the for the crew yeah absolutely and but while we're saying thank you and bringing up thank yous and bringing up thanksgiving we want to make sure to say thank you to our last week's guests um it was really fun having you guys in our round table conversation that was different and it was awesome to experience it for the first time with you two guys shout out to miss hollywood 27 and to tdsg official that's their ig names make sure to follow make sure to support them the makeup artist and the rapper make sure to f- pay attention to their next moves and thanks for being on the show always good to have people who do things or or networking kind of aspects so that was great to have them here absolutely because uh everything is about cross promotion miss marty mark 100 percent. and are we getting right to it because i'm excited for today's uh show we have a few things to talk about because first and foremost we must address this <laughs> this 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 shit that we saw on Paper Magazine with the Menage a Trois, Nicki Minaj, as you guys saw that follow us on our IGs and our Twitters and all that and Facebook. You guys saw that we posted it and we wanted some of you guys' feedback. And uh, what are you going to say, Marley? I don't even know. So first, Paper Magazine has a history of spicy images, as I guess you could say. That's a nice way of putting it. It's a nice way of putting it. Um, I think a couple years ago, maybe two years ago, Kim Kardashian broke the internet with her extended booty champagne shot, whatever that was, that was in a the crazy. cover, mm-hmm. right? And, like, she showed her bare ass and things like that, which, I mean, we thought, I guess, because it was accentuated and it was, like, extra and it was, like, purposely exaggerated that we were, like, you know, it's kind of funny. It's interesting. Okay, cool. Like, 
you know, whatever. It was, and it was, it was more art, realm. you think? Say that again? It was more like art. I, not that I use the word art loosely. <laughs> <laughs> because... Art can be a form of expression, and yes, it could be exaggerations, right. and it could be all those things. But this was a play on Kim's was a play on what we know Kim as is about her booty, and like that's what people point as also like her body, right? right. So they exaggerated her body, which is why we know who she is. Yes, right. So it wasn't like she was like disgusting. It wasn't like it was just out of this world, it was taking a play. So it could be art because it's a play on what we know mm -hmm. and exaggerating that, right? Paper Magazine, again, has done multiple, if you look at their history, the Rihanna one was really dope. If you've never looked at the Rihanna cover and the Rihanna images where she's in the bodega, she got purple hair and she got yeah. all the earrings, all that shit, extra, right? That's all it right, really right. is. So the Nikki one, a lot of y'all had emotions to it. <laughs> and that was a little more than extra. I don't think it exaggerated how Kim's did. It didn't take a play. What exactly we were we exaggerating in this? If we're going to go on that concept, like everything is an exagger an amplified version of yourself. So is I didn't know that Nicki Minaj was like this. I, you know what I'm saying? Like this is what you are? Like, like, a, like a girl that is kind of doing sexual acts like is that or maybe that is who she is i don't know i've never thought of her in that way right me neither like i've never I don't thought know. to her to be like a dirty kind of person like dirty is the word i guess i don't know how to like sexualize i think like, dirty is the word that's how i feel about it i don't feel like oh this was sexy i feel like this was a little raunchy and dirty wasn't that the point i think it may have been but i don't think we all saw it that way one key word when we posted this Right, we posted on our IG Messy Mondays podcast. We want to hear what you have to say about the image. Did Nicki Minaj break the internet? Or is it just trashy? And what's the difference nowadays between high fashion and pornographic images? Do you like it or not? The one word that was the one adjective is that an adjective? I think <laughs> you and so. your English and your grammar. I know. Was trashy. Trashy. If you look at our NG comments, everyone wrote the word trashy. Right. That was unclassy. the trending word in all of our comments. Untrashy, unclassy, garbage, trashy. Thought she was the queen of rap. And shout outs to shout outs to Coily Fro wrote, I smell desperation. Right. She needs attention, obviously, because she fell off. I think that for some reason, my, as soon as I saw the image, like, first of all, I heard about it before I saw it. I was listening most likely to The Breakfast Club, and they had made a comment about this picture on Paper Magazine. So I was like, oh, shit, Nikki's on Paper Magazine. Immediately, my first go-to response is, Kim did that shit, so most likely Nikki looks wild on that shit somehow. You know what I'm saying? Because Kim's picture was wild. So I'm like, all right, cool, it's going to be some wild shit. But then at the end of the day, I'm thinking, obviously, you know, Nikki also does classy shit sometimes because she's done shit like with Donatella Versace. She's done shit with mm -hmm. high fashion, high end, high caliber shit. So it's like, okay, I'm thinking this is going to be obviously over the top because it's Nikki, but then it's also probably going to be super dope. That was my understanding before I even heard about what it really was. When I looked up the image, I got like grossed out. Like it was just like, as soon as I looked it up, I was kind of like, this is kind of gross. Like I don't really think that I'm cool with like seeing you in this position. Like, and it's not even like being uptight. Like I was just like, why is this necessary? Why are you doing this? And immediately I thought to myself, I'm like, why do you want attention so badly right now? Like that was my first, whether or not that's what it was. It's like all she's been on the media about has been negative shit. So now she's trying to do this to like cover up all the negative shit that's going on in her career. It might be that it might be to deep, like to change the direction of people were looking right. at her as. Because in the past couple of months, or maybe in the past year, more, mostly of all of 2017, right? Um, there has been a lot of, the female rappers are coming out. Right. And, and for the past five, seven years, it was just Nicki out here, right? And a lot of other women just on the well, come up. Well, and on a popular status. Yes, there yeah, was yeah, other, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But she was the only popular for sure. The popular one. Right. Mainstream. Right. So... 
in this aspect, as 2017, we've seen the rise of Cardi B. We have seen um, Remy, Remy Ma, Ma came out and put out the diss track. I she mean, but had, Remy Ma's having that buildup is coming. I feel it. Exactly. Yeah. And Nikki has not had, she sent out three records after that Remy Ma shit and none of them stuck. Yo, but like even her shit with Lil Wayne and Drake, that shit was weak to me. It didn't stick. Nothing, none of those It was weak because it felt like it was like, you know how, in my head, when I listen to that song, I, look, I hear it like, Drake and Lil Wayne are just doing this shit because they're her boys. But it's like, you know that this is bullshit. Like, this is terrible. Like, I don't know how I, like, I just didn't like it, but whatever. First of all, that's like, first of all, she broke up with Meek and then her friends came back. And that's like when you, you're with your boyfriend, you cut off all your friends, and then you gotta be like, hey, guy, and you, curl, you slowly, <laughs> like, start texting back into the group chat. Right. <laughs> and they were like, yes, oh, well, I let's hang out so again. Well. Yeah, and they're like, let's <laughs> hang out again. Let's, you know, go out to dinner and meet up, and it's still just awkward. That's right. what that is. Oh, my we God. We just got to be honest with ourselves. Right. Right. That was a very great description of exactly what that was. Because we have both been through that. <laughs> <laughs> right. But anyways. Um, I think, yes, I got the idea. It's supposed to be extra, but I wasn't, like, turned. I, you know what? I had no feeling towards it. Okay. It did not. I think I've never been like the ginormous Nikki fan. So I think that may have been why it had no feeling towards it. Maybe. But I was just like, oh, okay. All right. Like, I don't know. Like, it didn't do anything for me. I never want to see it again. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's one of those things that it's like, you know how when you go somewhere and you like visit a place you've never been and then you're like, okay, I'll never have to do this again. Like, it's all right. (laughs) <laughs> experience checked off never again do I need to do this again so it's like I felt that way when I saw the picture I'm like it's okay I never have to see this again but if I had to have between her picture and Kim's picture up I would have Kim's picture up in my apartment over Nikki's true that's true do you get what I, like, do you get what I mean like when you're visually looking at it it'd be like, right. I would have Kim's up 100% I think it would even be more classier for the ambiance of the apartment or something. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it like, would. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Kim. Yo, Kim is on this episode a couple times. She's on a lot of episodes a couple of times. One day, Queen Kim, please, please come on the podcast. <laughs> I'm telling you out loud, if you ever want to come on the podcast, anytime, bitch, in ever, I would just leave my job and I'm coming. Like, ever, bitch, ever. I love you. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> I have here also just a couple more comments and I put this in another group chat that I have here in Seattle. One was you would never catch Jay-Z on the cover of GQ with his ish out pretending to be servicing himself. Men don't put themselves out there like this. Why should women? Nice. Repeat the freaking name on that. Her name is Ray. Another one was Nikki was just reaching for me. Like, that's an amateur move, a new chick in the game move. She already established, so you kind of see the pics as a plea of don't forget about me. I, I like love the don't, I, don't forget about me, true, exactly. Like, still, look at me. I'm, I want attention. Yeah, don't forget about me. Like, I'm still here. But yeah. you're here. We know you're here. We're waiting for something to drop. That's Her new line in that song, Motorsport, after I've heard it, and I know you guys heard me in the previous episodes. I'm not going to say to them, because it's not and December I'm... 5th yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slowly catching on, and I think I might be a little late, but the verse is not bad. Mm-hmm. But there's not, like, no one, these bitches are your sons, like, or whatever she says all the time. Right. That's the one thing. I'm like, we need you to step it up more. Right. Or you know what? What was wrong with her just being silent right now? I feel like I, if I was on her team, I would have been like, yo, Nikki, just, let's just chill for a little while. Real G's moving silence. Like, like just chill for a little while. Let these bitches flame, flame up. You know what I'm saying? Let it simmer down. And then remind bitches who you are. Like, why are you doing this right now when these new bitches are getting shine? Like, let, like, don't compete with fresh shit. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Yes. You're already established. You already right. have your spot. Just keep going. Rihanna, don't clap back at everybody. Why should you? 
like just just keep it going keep it going even, and even when she gained a little weight and people was she kept it moving like she That's was it. like yeah i gained a little weight you know what i'm saying like and i'm gonna be back don't worry you know what i'm saying like, like that's I got how this I, right 100 percent. so good luck to nikki out there <laughs> oh, i don't know i don't really like what's happening right now and now safari's becoming relevant again because of this bitch it's just like desperate moves but anyway um, today's episode is going to be a little different because today we're going to actually do something a little different. It's not a story. It's not a guest. It's not people discussing things. It's actually me and Marley Mar getting answers. And what are we getting answers to? Questions that we need answers to. And that's what <laughs> we're doing right now. Yes. <laughs> so on Messy Mondays, we're going to do a little bit of a spin on questions that we have had amongst our own personal lives. And this is funny because it's actually between me and Marley the other day. She sends me this and she goes, yo, we got to talk about this on the podcast. She actually sends me a screenshot and she's like, yo, check this out. So I thought this was dope as hell. She goes, imagine if you can leave Yelp reviews on your ex. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout star. out to that idea. That is hilarious. Like, There's a lot of one stars out there. Oh, my God. It's like rateyourprofessor.com. You know how before like you would not I pick a class? I loved it. <laughs> Yo, you would rate not pick a class. Rateyourprofessor.com saved my life. Oh, my God. Mine too. Oof. 100%. Mine too. Literally. So if I, I can get my life she- saved to that level, <laughs> like, would you not fuck with this website? Save my, save, reclaim my time. One hundred percent, reclaim yes. my time, because you're just when you look at a Yelp review before you go somewhere to eat, you know you look at everyone's kind of like comments and you see and you how much tell, it might cost you too. Them little dollar sign shits be helping. Like, do exactly. I want to spend a lot or do I want to spend a little today? Yeah, like how much effort needs to really be put into this, but. Also, like, the Yelp review, you can tell when someone's bullshitting. Like, they just had their own problem with the place. And then you can also tell when someone genuinely tried the place, had a good, you know, experience. It wasn't just on themselves. You can differentiate that. So the idea of just start putting stars on your ex or something or a website, that would be hilarious. So if one of you is a developer, (laughs) I would suggest making this happen. But there has to be some type of a legality of like putting people's negative information out there. Like yeah. there has to be some type of a loophole here. Because I don't think you can put that out there. <laughs> no, but it, I mean, I'm I'm probably going too far. But I think if someone has the ability to make this happen, you should. It'll be so crazy for you to like be able to live an, an anonymous review on your ex, dude. Like to the point that you say everything that's wrong with this motherfucker. Like, look. <laughs> This dude can't do this. He's very bad at this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I used to fake it constantly. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's wow. like, imagine. You can really go in on somebody. Like, I'm going to be very honest, and I'm not even going to say my own name. That'd be that would be dope. Actually, that would be, maybe IG would develop, like, where you can leave anonymous comments on other people's comp pictures or something. Oof, I hope that doesn't even happen one day. Oof, people would be so vicious. <laughs> people will be vicious, Marley. Because people are vicious now. Yeah, people are like ruthless. Ruthless. Look at us. We're like a little podcast from coast to coast, from state to state. You feel me? We're just this little podcast, and our followers were just straight cutting Nikki's throat open. They were like, trash, garbage, you're done, get away. And it's like, and look at us. Imagine on a grander scale, people who want to be noticed, how vicious people are. How, um, I can only imagine how disgusting comments are. Yeah. And I think that would lead under the way of this Yelp reviewing. Yeah. It would just get really ugly. <laughs> it would get ugly. There. No real shit. It's more hurting feelings than really. Yeah, like the bitter ex. Yes, exactly. One hundred percent, exactly. But tell us what you think about uh, leaving Yelp reviews <laughs> about your ex, right? Is that something you would like to see? Maybe some investments might need to be made. I actually want to share a really inappropriate, prejudiced um, <laughs> wow. post that I actually saw uh, on IG. Not because 
it's like let's hate people. I'm not one of those people. I just really like inappropriate jokes about people's race. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let me tell you what it is. Let me get the right one. Sorry. No, you're fine. I just thought of it. Just a reminder, okay. everyone should be following on us on Instagram at Messy Mondays Podcast. Right. Right here it says, white people love snitching so much they created Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what, though? We appreciate it, though. (laughs) I don't want to go into a dirty restaurant just like they don't want to. (laughs) So I 100% appreciate it. 100%. Shout out to all the white folks who created that. Yeah. The genius who made Yelp. Who doesn't shop on Amazon based on reviews? Yeah. Come on. Very true. And I feed the community. I be giving reviews on shit. I'm like, this shit is great. You know what I'm saying? You You know people get paid for that? Like professionally? Yeah. How does one do On this? Amazon. Like, can I... Why? If I review a lot, I'll get paid? If you're a constant reviewer who does really good, legit reviews, and then you have like an X amount, companies start reaching out to you oh my and sending God. you the stuff so that you can create reviews. Guys, I am an Amazon addict, and I'm definitely going to do this. Thanks for the information. Yeah. There was a, a piece on it on a... It might have been like 2020 or Dateline, some shit. But it's you are pretty, feeding my addiction, girl. This is what you're doing right now. It's pretty awesome. You can make a good living, and you might not get paid. You might just get paid in the items that they are. Oof, but free items are free items. Still with that as well. So just saying. I would suggest looking into that. Yeah, just why not figure out how you can make money doing what you're doing already, right? Exactly. Exactly. So speaking of group chats. I've dived into my own group chat here um, with a couple girls. I think there's five of us, six of us in it. I might not be including myself. And they all listen to the podcast. Yay. And one of the girls had questions. <laughs> questions that she's just like, I don't understand. I don't get it. She had like a moment. Yes. Right. She had a moment and she's like, I just, I don't know what's happening out here. Right. Yeah. And she's currently in a hot rock in a hard place kind of situation. And one major question that we looked at or would that she sent was why do men want you after they see you happy with someone else? Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> <laughs> So why is that? And I thought that would be great for us to discuss and then hear everyone else's answers also for next week. But is it because they want to know, could they still have you? They realize they might have lost you. They want to still have you as an option. And what should the woman do? Okay. Give them a chance, push them, uh, keep (laughs) pushing forward or ignore them. What are your thoughts? Um, one thing I can say, the, the, the main question, why do men want you after they see you happy with somebody else? I have a few answers for that. Because number one is infuriating. It's so fucking infuriating. Because it's like, now you want me because somebody else does. Like, Really? So, like, in a way, it kind of gets you a little annoyed. Like, that is that what it took for you to, like, realize what I was? Like, you had to realize that somebody else wanted me? That sucks. Mm-hmm. That really sucks. So, if that's one of the reasons, gentlemen out there, for those of you who behave that way, I, I think that's whack of you as a human. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, don't wait for someone else to tell you the value of something. Like, you should see the value of something. It shouldn't be based on what other people believe. So that's fucking whack. Another thing is that I believe that when a woman is happy, that's when she's the most beautiful. So it's like because she's relaxed and she's in a good space and she's just ready to live her life. You know what I'm saying? So she's happy. So that shines on her face. That's like when a woman is like pregnant. Like all of a sudden you see this beauty is because she's like in tune with her kid. You know what I mean? So it's like... I think that's one of the reasons why. Maybe the reason, sweetheart, 
that he's looking at you and he's paying attention to you is because you're probably the most beautiful you've ever been. Because you're finally not with his fuck ass that's always making you look stressed and you fucking dándole mucha cabeza a ese fucking tigre for what? When you already have somebody that's probably not putting you through that stress. So it's like, that's why you popping now. Because it's like, you look happy, bitch. So it's like, I feel like sometimes that's what it is. Like, why all these dudes, all of us, when I was single, I was mad bored. And I was in my house like, whoa, I'm so fucking upset. But now you out more. Like, you look cute. You get your hair done more often because your man's coming over. So it's like you taking pictures a little bit. So it's like, yeah, now niggas want you because you look happy. Yeah. I, th- I, I agree with the glow thing, right? Because when you're at your happiest, things happen. Good right. things happen. Good things, things continue happen. to happen. Positive things continue to happen. When you're in a clear space and a clear mind, all that negativity has gone away, and so you don't continue to, to bring in negative energy or negative people surrounding you. So you surround yourself with additional happiness, everyone else. Right. So you start cutting off friends who be like, girl, you are negative Nancy. Move somewhere <laughs> else. I'm out here happy. You know, those, like, you know, any of your homegirls. And then the guy, that same thing, and maybe he's not in a great place in his life. And so seeing you being happy, seeing you being so happy out there, maybe is infuriating or either, like, just genuinely, like, they're noticing they're missing out on that. That They could be that same happiness. Or they're, they're kicking themselves in the butt, like, damn, like, I could have been next to her now. You know what I'm saying? Like, that moment of, Regret. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, I think happiness and energy has a lot to do with it, and I think right. that attracts people. People I really get like are attracted point. to people who are happy, who feel yeah, good. That, exactly, and I feel like that's a really good observation that you made because it's just like maybe even if your ex wants to be happier because now that he sees that you're demonstrating happiness, maybe now he's more engaged because it's like that's more attractive to him than what you guys were experiencing before, which was probably a lot of arguments or like that stage at the end when you no longer want to be together. So it's like that could be a lot of it. That could be the answer to this question that all women always experience. It's like now this motherfucker want to come back. Now this motherfucker want to rock my shit. Because it's like you finally trying to move on and it's like really now? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And especially if like the end of your relationship was really bad. Yeah. Right? Before you moved on and then found your happiness. Yeah. That could have a, a lot of an impact to do with it. Yeah. And then maybe that person thinks you're happy you're so happy without them. And right. it may not just be that. You're just finding that I'm happy. Well, yeah, you could be happy you're without them, but it could just be because you removed yourself from that. Things change for you. Yeah. And everything just went a different direction. There's nothing more beautiful to me than when I see a woman after she just got out of a toxic relationship and she finally shook that off and, like, got treated right. Like, I feel like I've seen that within a few people I know, and men too, and men too. Not to say it's only a female thing. I've seen men go for one relationship that wasn't the best for them and then all of a sudden find that girl and you're like wow that was dope like this nigga looks happy you know what I'm saying so it's like it's nice when you see it happen to people definitely but what if she left that relationship and you weren't in a happy space in a happy relationship do you think that person would still like I know that okay let me see how I'm trying to word this so, like, for myself, when you see your ex kind of, like, still not doing well, right? Not does that, that, make, not does that make you happy, though? Does that make you Doesn't happy? Make, no, that would be evil. <laughs> <laughs> but you're kind of just like, oh, okay. It looks like the shit's still continuing for you. Right. Right? Like, you're still on that same pace, that same bullshit. Whether I'm happy on the other side or not, or I'm, you know, having a good time, or, like, things change for me. If that person hasn't changed for themselves, what's the pur- purpose of like? Does, do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like what? Why even waste your time? Yeah, but they haven't even changed for themselves, so exactly. they're looking at you on one side, being happy, or either just continue moving on with your life. Not even happiness. It's just you've continued on with your life, or you've just and, grown just because of time. Yes, if you have right. changed as a person, like you are, yeah. you are changing and, and growing as a person, but they are still stuck. 
they're still over there, just still stuck in that same old way. Maybe that might be another thing too. It's yeah. not about the happiness. It's about the growth. Like you're growing and you're going without them. I think that the quicker we realize that we should get rid of these people that are going to be out of our lives, the quicker we just move on with that process, the better and more productive we will be. And I feel like that's one of the things that I've been able to um, enhance in my filtering process is kind of like that moment when you realize like, damn, this is not a good relationship for me for reasons of X, Y, and Z. And I don't mean romantically. I mean socially. I mean um, on the same wavelength. I mean on energy levels, on professional levels, on whatever it is. Like that um, elimination process is just a lot quicker now. It's not like, um, oh, let me try to ride this out and figure this out. Not really. I feel like there's not really a necessity for that anymore. Like once you see clear indications that this is not a good fit for you, mm-hmm. I think we should just move forward. And and I mean that even in this circumstance, like before, like you used to like ride it out with your ex for like a lot longer, like because you just did, you know what I'm saying? On some mm-hmm. like, let's figure this shit out. But like now it's like, but you know you're not gonna be with him. And you know there's no future. And you know he's kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, stop. Yeah, because... And Just that's, stop. And that's to answer her other question. Is like, is it because um, they want to still have you as an option? You don't know if that person, if what that person's intentions always are. And I guess it's depending upon the person. You never know anyone's intentions, honestly. No. And then she said, should the woman give... Um, what should the woman do? Give them a chance, keep pushing forward or ignore them and I think it's really up to you again if that if he ha- or she has not changed in the matter that you have changed you have to decide whether that's up to you if you really want to go back into that you gotta decide if that's something you're willing to accept because if you're happy how do you know they're happy how do you know they've changed how do you know they've grown how do you know where they're at they could just be saying this because they're seeing you happy and want your happiness but it should be equal and honestly happiness isn't difficult so if it's difficult for you to be happy with that person then that person's not for you yeah and don't leave something you're happy with for something you're not sh- you're not sure about that you're secure about that you're not sure be sure in the choices that you make before doing it Guys, you, you may regret it after. For our true listeners, the real fans out there, once again, the real fans, we really love you. Remember the backslide episode? Like, it yeah. never works to, like, go back to the ex real quick. Not to say that it always turns out to be to that extreme, but it's never a good idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let it go sometimes, honestly. For sure. And then another question. There was multiple questions within this. <laughs> Shout out to her. Um, how do you know if they are coming, what they're saying is coming from the heart or out of insecurity again? Right. It's, that's a big one that I struggle with too. Cause it's like, sometimes like, do you realize that this guy is just like desperate to like get what he wants and like, he's just doing it to get what he wants. And like, you know how men are like when they really, really want to win, They'll do anything to win. That's just how men yeah. are. Like, ah. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, is it that that's driving you? Because you just refuse to let anyone to take away your prize away because like a man thing? Or is it because you really just fighting for someone that you really, really love? Like, I don't know the difference sometimes with men. I, I Depending upon the person. I it's don't know. Like, I personally don't know sometimes. Like, it's just... I don't know. I think sometimes when you see that 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 switch in the guy, that it's like he's just so fucking determined to get this right now. Like I don't know if that's love or if that's just because that's how men are. You know what I mean? Like when they focus on something, they focus on it and they want to make it happen. I don't know. Yeah, and then that's their full determination on that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's hard to read that. I guess it really depends on the person, but it's hard to to read upon that. Like what kind of what type of person is he really? Is he that yeah. type of person that's fully determined at any cost, at any moment, because right. that's fully in their personality? 
or he's just like a bullshitter exactly. already. And you're like, I know you could just be bullshitting me. Right. Or like the and guy that could that's be never like sweet yourself. and he's only sweet when he wants you back. Yeah. Not Like cool. when did these characteristics come out? Exactly. And you know it's bullshit. You know it's yeah. bullshit. Because you've like never been sweet. <laughs> exactly. Like, like, bitch, since when did you <laughs> Like, what? Yeah, I think it's really depending upon the person. Like, I know some really sweet, sec- like, secure, from the heart kind of guys. Yeah. That when they tell you things or have conversations with you, it's a real true, just raw, right. you know, true, thing. True. And then I know some guys who are the fakest bullshitters, players, assholes, whatever you want to call them. Ugh. They know how to play with all strings and all your emotions. So it really is depending upon that person's characteristics. It really True. is that. True. Um, and then last part of this question. Man, this set of questions. <laughs> Shout out to the kids. And what about if it's a man you were falling for and always wish he would tell you what he's telling you now so you're conflicted with who to choose, even though your new bae makes you happy and is everything you wanted. Again, I think... Girl, really read the last part of that. Read the last part of that. The it's very sad. last thing you said. Even though your new bae makes you happy and is everything you wanted. Did you hear what you just said, <laughs> Did you hear what you just said out loud now? Like you heard an adult... Of, of reason just said something to you as a rational person. Did you hear what she just said out loud? Why are you even doing this? Are you kidding me? I think she knows the answer, just wants to hear the answer, like wants to be told. I get it, but women, we all do that. Why are we fucking with our own selves? Like you found someone that's finally providing to you what this person was not providing to you. Yeah. Come on, like men and, and don't do super shit like this. A key word is that now he's telling you everything you've wanted to hear. No, like he's just telling you that. He's trying to steal your happiness. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and it looks like you answered your own question too. Right. So I think I think you already know what you're supposed to be doing. I think you already know the answer to it. We don't want to tell you what to do, but I think you've answered your own question. It's funny enough. Make sure to keep everybody updated. <laughs> I will. This group chat just keeps on going. I love it. It's I a lot it. of love in here. A lot Who of love. doesn't love the group chat that lets you escape real life? It gets hot in the group chat sometimes, too. I love me some group chats. But send us your questions at MessyMondaysPod at gmail.com. Or, and, or send us a DM on IG at Messy Mondays Podcast. Send us questions on Twitter at Messy Mondays Pod. Um, any questions like these, we're happy to answer. I mean, this was great to kind of dive into because it's real life. It's right. real shit that right. happens. And we have all been through in some way, shape, or form. We ain't on this earth for 30 years for nothing. Right. And what Our do 20s, we all we do? we have lived through it. <laughs> What, what do we all do? We go to the group chat whenever we want answers, right? Don't we all do that? Don't we all be like, yo, what should I do? This dude got me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just... I, I have happens. separate group chats for that. Yeah, exactly. For different topics. I, yeah. I have separate group mm-hmm. chats for certain questions that I know would be answered in certain ones. You know when you right. know your group your group chat dynamic? Be like, yes. mm, I won't ask these bitches. I'll ask the other set. Or like, yeah. that's too much of a high level question for the low level type of conversation in this chat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Right. So you have that. Yeah, we're, we're your group chat, guys. Yeah, out loud group chat. That's the messy yes. Monday thing. Yeah, we'll have group chat segment on here. <laughs> oh, I like what it. What the fuck Yay. is happening in the group chat? I love it. You see how it happens? <laughs> But what we do want to still talk about, because you know, even though, like, we don't want to, but at the end of the day, we have to. Like, we have to discuss the fact that Kim K's baby shower is, like, taking place without the surrogate being there. You know what I'm saying? People had a lot of concerns and questions, and I have an opinion on this. 
And it makes sense. <laughs> no, but first tell people what happened. Like, tell people what happened. So, um, Kim had a baby shower. She has a third baby on the way. And mm-hmm. she had, she's doing, she can't have, she can't um, hold the baby herself in her uterus. Yeah, she can't carry. She can't carry. She's had several issues, several surgeries. Um, and I think with her son, her last child, it was like a major, major um, risk. So, but she definitely wants more kids. I mean, she comes from a family of like a hundred. Right. So, <laughs> sometimes when you come from big families, you want, I mean, look at her sister. Look at yeah. Courtney. You know, she want more too. With the same man. But that's a different story. <laughs> but, um, Kim had her baby shower, which, two things. One, are you supposed to have a baby shower for every baby that you have? I mean, and two, does why she really not? get gifts? Well, I don't think she really gets gifts. I think really. they just have the shower just to have the shower. Right, right. Does that make like her friends are like Kim? We're not bringing you more. No, but it's just like it's it's a it's a it's un, it does it's unspoken. You don't even have to discuss that because it's like they can it's, buy the child whatever. Right. I get yeah, it. Yeah, it's just an enjoyment kind of thing, I guess, yeah. just to have fun. Right. To experience it. So. Because she's having the baby via surrogate, she did not invite the surrogate to the baby shop. <laughs> I agree. I okay. 100% agree. Okay, but first let's, let's clarify what surrogacy is. A surrogate is someone who takes in place of something else. You know, like that could be, you can have somebody be that at a meeting or a person can carry your child. Basically, that's what the definition of the word is. But there's two types of surrogacies that you could do. You could be a traditional surrogate, um, which is where a woman gets artificially inseminated with the father's sperm, and then she carries the baby and delivers it, um, and your partner will raise it. That's a traditional surrogate, that the biological mother, um, because it was her egg that was fertilized by a father's sperm, and the donor can also be used. So that's one way. And then there is another one that... That's the technique with um, in vitro fertilization, and that's when you grab eggs from a mother and fertilize them with sperms from a father and place them in an embryo into a uterus that acts as a surrogate. So it's kind of like a little hotel, you know, for the baby that you let, store the baby there and they incubate it for you and then they basically give birth. So the surrogate carries the baby until birth and she doesn't have any genetic ties to the child because it wasn't her egg that was used it was the birth mother's egg and it was the sperm so this is the this is the process that Kim and Kanye went with they used their own stuff to create the baby and that's basically what they did right Marley yeah right i'm pretty sure that's along the lines that they more than likely did and then yeah. the surrogate is just carrying the baby because Kim's issue is being able to carry right right so people were like leaving comments and i saw her on i think she was on the real the talk show and she was saying people were upset or like we're asking why isn't the surrogate there and things like that i don't recall her answer but i'm like girl she don't gotta be there for what i get why? it this is not your celebration like it's it. not this is not your child like it's already enough and i can only imagine that woman is carrying a baby, so if you add a, emotions to it, if you create attachment to it, like a baby shower, like a celebration, all that stuff, it might be, it might get a little crazy. It might be, True. she might get a little too attached. attached. Right. And then, I mean, this is a big risk for them as it is because they're rich. She right. might go bonkers. Like, she might literally be like, I'm going to kick take hold of this baby. The baby. Like, right. I can imagine the, the amounts of paperwork they have been through. Right. How they secure this lady might be stored at like not stored. Placed in a house. <laughs> I, I have no real shit. I I was thinking the word stored. <laughs> <laughs> that lady is in a bomb ass luxury apartment, super souped up with security, one hundred percent surrounding oh, sweetheart, her. With chefs and everything and vitamins and come on. Eating the best, getting massages on her feet, Ooh, back you know rubs, facials Yoga. A living life right now. <laughs> living life. All right? And getting paid a shitload, I bet. All medical expenses taken care of. Probably got a brand new car for after, like, a push gift. Who knows? <laughs> but Who's push what won't happen is that you will not be having a baby shower. I am sorry. 
this is not for you. So, I, I mean, agree. I also don't think that it's appropriate because of the level of celebrity that Kim and Kanye have and the level of hate they both have. It's, I don't think it's smart for people to see who that person is because I don't even think it's safe. To be very honest with you. I think that she should be on the raps. And I feel like, like you said, like she is not family. She is not someone that we want to continue speaking to after this on that level. Like she's providing us a service. And I think it's best to keep it separate and look at it like she's just someone that you're employing. Because I feel like it's way too emotional and hard to act like, there's not a connection being created there somehow. Yeah. There has somehow. to be. There's humans yeah. being created out of these people right now, and you're all part of that. Very true. Mm-hmm. And I think keeping it separate that is, is the right choice. It's the correct choice. And shout out to that lady because it is a big risk just because of who the people are. Right. I'll be of kind of scared. <laughs> yeah. I would like you do not I wouldn't tell fuck her this friend. Up. Like I wouldn't tell my friends. I wouldn't tell. Like you have to keep that. Like I'm sure the there's a um, what's that thing called? Not DNA. What's that shit called? The protective order where you can't talk. Oh yes, they they definitely um have that bitch sign mad shit like that. Yeah, I would be very cautious, but I don't see anything wrong in not having her at the baby shower. Y'all are just extra. Because <laughs> you know very well for yourself, you would have never have that other woman. Yo, in how, your shower. how bizarre must it be to have somebody else carrying your kid? Like, wow. It must be hard. I really, if anyone who's listening has ever been through this, we would love to hear what your experience Definitely. was like. Like, that is fascinating to me. And I don't mean it in a judgmental way. I mean, like, wow. Like, that's wow. I know it's a. I, I know that it's a thing where also, a lot of women do it to like pay for college, pay for bills. It's like if they're able to care, and some doing for the kindness of their heart too. I mean, I'm sure. It's knowing a check. that other I'm women. I'm sure it's one heck of a check. Yeah, but knowing that other women can't carry or can't do, you know, certain things. Damn! I shout think out to women who would do that for somebody else if you're just doing it because you're a good person. Wow. Like if that's a kind, kind thing to do. Like it's wow. Really, it was on that show, Shameless. Do you watch Shameless? Yes. Yeah, where the mom ended up carrying the baby for the daughter. Yes. And that, but it happens. It happens. If you really, you know, want to make your family, you know, you go beyond all means to make it happen. Why not? That was really weird, though, because she actually had sex with her husband, her daughter's husband. It was a little bit weird. <laughs> but that's how Shameless goes. Shameless is great. It's coming back and soon. Then, Love that show. I, uh, I need to finish catching up. But congratulations to Kim again. Congratulations. I can't wait. You guys make really beautiful babies. No bullshit. No. Sh- oh, my gosh. Beautiful babies. Amazing. <laughs> but, guys, we also want to make sure that we talk about such a beautiful holiday that's happening in just a few days. And that's Thanksgiving. Oh, my God. This time of year makes you just appreciate The people you actually have around you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just because traditionally that's what we know as Americans or because it gets a little cooler and, you know, people get a little bit more at the house now and you do a little more calling on the phone because people just catch up and say, hey, what are your plans? You know, like, I don't know. It starts to become a little bit more unified. Mm -hmm. So this time of year has something special in the air. It's nice. It is. It's really nice. And I lived in Florida majority of my life and this is like my first official like holiday season season that cold that fall that feel so it really and then lights are on everywhere but like it's still cold and chilly so it has that full oh I kind of love that you have to like drink pumpkin spice flavored things (laughs) I do everything is pumpkin spiced out here yeah (laughs) everything that's damn, but this is your first Thanksgiving without the fam? Yes, don't make me cry. <laughs> it's my first okay. Thanksgiving. Um, I won't be going home. I will be here in Seattle. What are your plans? My plans, I actually, um, for work, we are cooking for some youth 
teens in transition doing some cooking some dinners for them so they don't have families to go to there either that's um, awesome so we're cooking for them they in some housing um apartments um i'm also serving um thanksgiving or wednesday the day before thanksgiving we're serving at a church we're serving food at for families as well yeah and then thursday me and um i have a co-worker here who also moved from the east coast that we don't have family neither one of us have family here and we're not going to have family here for that during that <laughs> time and we're not going anywhere so we're probably going to spend it together like a friends giving kind of deal nice which is not bad i've been invited to a couple places and things like that so you, you guys know, should do with- that's what you should do you should do the dinner hopping oh yeah do the oh, dinner yeah. i think that that's the move that's the move especially 100. when you're like like single and you're like in that p- space that is like all right you know i don't really have a lot of family like you do the you do the dinner hopping that's like the perfect solution 100 percent. yes and everyone who's listening already knows <laughs> i got y'all addresses right you know where i'll be at and get the pies ready <laughs> they know who they are so yes i'll do some dinner hopping um so i do both a good thing like you know good deeds you know, being, you know, helping Very people, well those in need. And then partying and celebrating. Yay. Sounds this awesome. is my first non-Dominican Thanksgiving. Really? Just want to clarify that. Wow, that's interesting. So, this, oh, well, maybe not my first, but this is like, I won't be having penil. Right. You know, with the chimney sauce, that little nice lemon that goes on. Yeah. Arroz con bandule. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how to make that right now. <laughs> That's the problem. That is the problem. Where is my mother? Uh, yeah. That moro so. be on point. I love moro. Ooh, carbs. <laughs> <laughs> carbs. Potato salad, but like the Dominican potato salad. Ooh, I love the Dominican potato salad. Yes, with beets. It's the only time I eat beets is in that potato salad. So good. Guys, so, I know we're making you hungry and you're all so excited about yes. it. Yes. So that'll be, yeah, my first Thanksgiving out here. Christmas, I hope to be somewhere else. I'm going to work on that. Yeah, you should definitely come back to the East Coast for sure. I'll try. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and for but, you? Um, uh, well, I'm not traveling this year. I normally always go to New York, but I'm not going to New York this year. Uh, for those of you who follow me, you saw I was in Mexico last weekend, so I kind of had to, like, you know, space out traveling. So mm-hmm. um, I'm staying uh, here for the first time in a long time in Florida. Um, which is cool. Um, you know, I'm going to be able to kind of spend some time with, with the Boo's family. So that's <laughs> yes, the Boo. So that's exciting. That's different for me. Um, and we're gonna have me bake some dessert and stuff. So like, that's kind of my, that's why you, when you recommended to spike it a little bit, I thought that was pretty <laughs> cool. So yeah, that's, that's going to be my Thanksgiving. So it's going to be a different, but a good different. I don't know if you want to be that person who shows up with the family for the first time, Spike's <laughs> pie. I think so I do want to be... be that person, actually. <laughs> Except me for who I am, fam. Except me for who I am. It's the so we got to be. So, yeah. I don't know if that's the, the impression. That's, I don't know. Make two pies. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have two in your back pocket just in case something right, right, right. happens. Yeah. But that's awesome. Yeah, and we also want to make sure to say um, what we're thankful for. I want to make sure to always acknowledge um, the people in my life that, you know, keep me sane and that I love. Um, I want to say I'm very thankful for my podcast with my partner. It's pretty dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a passion, a hobby, as well as a addiction at the same time. (laughs) It really is. And um, yes, and I want to say uh, thank you to all the positive that has happened to my life this year. I'm in a happy place. So thank you. I'm glad to hear that. I'm yeah. thankful for I'm thankful for being able to move cross country and have a lot of support from people. Yeah. Um, from my friends, from my podcast partner. Yay. From my, you know, this little idea that came into fruition <laughs> off of right. some craziness. <laughs> Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm just excited. I did decide to stay longer in Seattle and continue on. So I'm excited for what the future holds. So I'm thankful 
that people are supportive of that decision and what's to come forward. Right. So, awesome. I, just, I think yeah. 2018 is going to be such a beautiful year for me and you. I and think I'm going to so. just say that out loud. And I I'm, think and so. I'm thankful for that. Bring it on, people. Bring it on. Yes. The season's going to go pretty fast, too. So I can yes. feel it already. For sure, for sure. We got to have a vision board episode. I think that's what our next episode oh, might be. Oh, my God, girl. We was, I was just talking to one of my homegirls in Cali because she saw my post yesterday about how my vision board, like, I almost accomplished everything I put on it, which I'm very proud of myself. From the one we made? Yes, from the one that we made in your house. Where is mine? I have it somewhere. Like, seriously, like, I almost every single thing on there I've accomplished. So, my friend goes, you and Marley should do an event. And we should all meet in one state and everyone create visions and really go in. She's like, because that shit is mad inspiring. And I'm like, fuck, that's a great idea. And she's like, yes. And she's like, include me because I'll do it. I wanted to, I actually, because I'm trying to make a lot of friends here, I was thinking about hosting one, like how I wanted to do one back at home right, initially. Right. So I can be like, let me bring all these girls in and like, you know, that would be really dope. That. Like, let so, people know, Mar. Like, it's a great idea. We might have to do that in 2018. We might have to talk about it in January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll plan and we'll keep you guys updated. Yes, because so look, a lot of people think it's cheesy. I don't think it's cheesy. Some people are visual people. It is what it is. Sometimes you need to take responsibility by creating something and saying, "This is what I want to do." It may not work for everyone, but it works for some people. You see what I'm saying? So as, as long as you're trying to set goals for yourself, at least you're doing something. A lot of times people say, what am I going to do with my life? I don't know what I'm going to do. But you have to first set goals and then things start to happen for you. Yeah. And the vision board was a success for me. And I think it's dope. I think it is too. And I'm excited. I got boards here and everything. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I have a book also. And I, gave, I gifted a book to, a, to one of my friends for her birthday. Um, ooh, actually, it's a good idea. I won't mention it because it might be good for you. <laughs> so I won't mention what the book or the gift is. So I can That's send cute. it to show me first. And then we can talk about it. Oh, how sweet. But yes, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's just say episode 15, baby. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> that's it <laughs> don't forget to send us your stories your comments your suggestions your thoughts um what you want to hear more about what you want us to talk about if you want to participate if you want to join you want to be a special guest on the show hit us up so submit your stories on instagram dm us at messy mondays podcast Email us at MessyMondaysPod at gmail.com. Hit us up on Twitter at MessyMondaysPod. Um, and my IG is Love, L-U-V, Marley underscore. You can follow me there. Yes, and you can follow me, show me at S-H-O-M-I underscore E-N-T. That's S-H-O-M-I underscore E-N-T. And shout out to Jermaine and Emily. Congratulations on your wedding. It was an amazing